All right, hi everyone. Thank you for joining the JMP Solutions Spring Webinar for AGV and AMR beyond point A to point B. I'm Andy Battler, Director of Operations for the AMR Division at JMP Solutions. You see my old photo there. This is a pre-COVID photo and my uh, email address hasn't changed, thankfully. Today we'll, uh, we'll start with a, a quick thank you. Uh, I want to thank everybody for, for joining. If I sound a bit nervous, it's because imagine you all in your underwear is a bit more realistic, given that most of you are joining from the confines of your home offices. So I'll do my best to get through. Um, a quick introduction to JMP and myself and my team and a quick review of the supply chain of the future. I don't want to go too deep into that. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the case for automated transport, uh, automated material transports. And then we'll get into integrated supply chain automation and what we're doing with AMR. And uh, oh, forgot the applause for my for my fantastic joke. So quickly uh, reviewing JMP Solutions, we're a seven division company, uh, automated automation integrator. We are focused on process automation and control systems integration across multiple branches. And then we've got North American wide uh, divisions focused on information systems, automated automation and robotics, automated guided vehicles, material handling, and networking security. Um, you can see the locations uh, that we serve are Calgary, Alberta. We've got a number of locations in Southern Ontario, Philadelphia, New Jersey, Kentucky, and Texas with a bunch of gray dots where we're looking to set up as well. And the industries we work in, primarily the AGV division focuses on automotive, CPG, and food and beverage. Why JMP AMR AGV? We've been integrating AMRs for over four years and AGVs for over 10. JMP is the largest independent integrator with any focus on AMRs. And because the mobile robot is not a solution unto itself, we provide complete fully autonomous solutions to our customers. For us, it's a total process and a total solution. We start with, by listening with the customer and our partners and then we whiteboard applications, come back to align our solutions with the needs of the customers. We support CapEx requests because not all automation, automated projects are easy to explain uh, to, to folks who don't have a background in automation. And then we deliver the solutions and we offer post delivery support. Being a, a systems integrator, we are focused on following a fairly rigid pro, uh, project management process, right from concept through design, build, commission, support. And for us, it's about guaranteeing an exceptional customer experience so that you want us to do it again. And JMP is a vendor agnostic AMR AGV integrator. As you can see on the left, we've got autonomous mobile robots, both mobile platform and fork and tug, with formal relationships with mobile industrial robots, auto motors, and auto guide mobile robots, and working relationships with KUKA and SEW. On the right-hand side, you've got our automated guided vehicle, partners with Rokla and Bila in the fork and tug and Daifuku Web in the smart cart. And for those of you who have already seen those introductory slides, now we can get right to the meat. For, for us, we look at the supply chains of the future. Uh, we can expect that supply chains and supply channels are going to change coming out of COVID-19, which has provided a significant stress test. And what, what I've got here is a couple of quotes that show how the reliance on China as a manufacturing hub has demonstrated weaknesses, and we can expect fragmentation into multiple manufacturing hubs. For manufacturers, having come from manufacturing, we love consistency. And the idea of fragmented manufacturing hubs introducing complexities with the offshoring process, um, we find that many C-suite executives might prefer to avoid this. So. What we see is uh, there will be pressure on North American producers to continue to find efficiencies in new areas and the supply chain being one of those. And when I talk about the supply chain, I'm talking about delivery to a factory, delivery within the factory to production areas, delivery to from the production area to finished goods and out the door. And then you've got some other material transportation activities inside like moving whip around. The case for supply chain automation, the, the idea here is that consumers make emotional decisions and rational justifications. So they don't necessarily care that labor, that there's labor shortages. Or they don't care that the unemployment rate was 3%. What they care about is that the paper towel that they want is not on the shelf. And so what they'll do is they'll buy the next best thing 
and establish a new status quo. We all know that prior to COVID, the unemployment rate was quite low. And I think that everybody on this call has knows somebody who was hiring and having trouble doing it. And I think further to that, everybody on this call expects that while it may not be next month, we will see the economy rebound. With larger purchases like cars, consumers will pay for value. So the example here is fog lights. We, we know that consumers will pay for options like fog lights because they provide additional functionality. What they won't pay, they won't pay for the option, they won't pay more for the option because they're delivered in an inefficient uh, manner to assembly. The case for supply chain automation goes to um, manufacturers. We've been using automation for years to improve uh, productivity. Autonomous mobile robots provide us a technology that we can now use to automate more advanced supply chain processes in and around manufacturing. As software and hardware solutions improve, we can apply them to areas and processes we hadn't considered before. We're using mobile robots, autonomous mobile robots, to move fruit from the middle of the proverbial tree to the lower hanging position. Cases for integrated AMR solutions. The, the integrated AMR solution involves coordinating the activities of an AMR or a fleet of AMRs with existing systems and automation. The goal with the adoption of automation is increased productivity while maintaining safety or maintaining in, or improving safety and quality. For AGVs, the travel from A to B has become a commodity activity. AMR OEMs are making that travel from A to B more commodity every single day. Whether an automated guided vehicle or an autonomous mobile robot, OEMs have done a great job of ensuring their user interface and mapping tools are friendly. So going beyond A to B, how do we get started with autonomous mobile robots? We like to start with a thorough application reviews that will ultimately lead to the identification of appropriate solutions. Failing to deliver on ROI promises negatively impacts a company's ability to deliver cost-effective solution or products, as well as a CapEx former CapEx responsible person. It also hurts your chances the next time you're looking for CapEx dollars if you don't if you don't provide the ROI that is promised. So with more options available, there are increased chances of square pegs and round holes. With the improvements in the tools available to supply chain professionals, we do we do we focus on, as I mentioned previously, the the total solution from concept through application build, right right out to the delivery, and that typically starts with Expect, expectations that pick up and drop off locations. What do the possible routes look like? What appliances or top modules are required for the application? How will the vehicles interact with existing automation? And what are the, what are the possibilities if we step outside what we know of the current application and build more solution value? So again, beyond A to B, what can we do with AMRs? So the primary focus here, or at least the, the first thing that I want to mention is maintaining traffic lanes by avoiding fixed conveyance. I'm, I'm going to go back to grade 11 physics here and uh, summon my Newton's laws of motion. Newton's first law of motion applies to manufacturing every single day. An object in motion will remain in motion and an object at rest will remain at rest. And the idea here is that manufacturing processes love continuous flow. Coming from manufacturing, again, we talked about it every single day that we wanted to keep product flowing through the process and out the door. AMRs provide a, a great way to uh, provide more flexible material transports. We can provide flexible applications that would previously have required fixed conveyance and cut off traffic flow. We see this quite a bit in automotive with subassembly delivery to line side production, where subassembly, you know, not, not necessarily far away, 
could be a few meters away, but it crosses an aisleway that has traffic every 30 seconds. And putting a fixed conveyance across that traffic flow would disrupt the, the rest of the supply chain within the building. Continuing on with our beyond A to B and what we can do with AMRs, autonomous rerouting. As you can see from this photo, you've got an interstate that is completely blocked and free navigation allows AMRs to reroute if they encounter a blocked path. And anybody with traditional AGV experience has seen an AGV encounter an obstacle and wait for it to clear. And the, that situation requires human intervention, which no longer, it's no longer an autonomous or an automated solution once you need intervention. Application manipulation. This is uh, my attempt to use a, a very salesy image here with the easy button. Adding and removing rules or points of activity are fairly seamless. And the idea that, you know, points of activity are pickup, drop off, charging, etc., and reconfiguring the system, whether it's a small tweak or a much larger tweak, is not as complicated as moving fixed navigation accessories like reflectors or magnetic tape or coated magnets buried in the floor. At JMP, we've done a number of interesting things with appliances. And this is probably the more interesting part of what can be done with AMRs. Again, given that the travel from A to B is relatively is becoming more relatively commodity. Passive appliances and top modules, static racks or gravity flow racks can allow AMRs to accept and um, accept and deliver products again without human intervention. So it's a fully autonomous solution, but it's also not necessarily a powered solution. Unit carrier mobile robots can be fitted with multiple standard appliances and these are these things show up on marketplaces like MirGo and JMP as well designs and builds uh, multiple custom appliances. More advanced top modules and appliances, as you can see from the image on the right, that is a, an actual design image. We've built, designed and built, and delivered an active powered appliance that can handle complex material transports. And the one that's shown here is uh, a seven axis motion appliance that can autonomously serve rewind, unwind machines with full rolls or empty cores. And again, this unit here has uh, seven axes that can <laughs> fully, fully serve without any human intervention. Further to that, uh, we've got what looks to be a fairly simple uh, part static rack. Um, what you can see here is actually a, a, a parts rack that is mounted on a floating pivot table. Um, as AMRs are not bound to a single path, you will find that they will wiggle as they course correct. And when you're engaging fixed machinery like conveyance, we want to make sure that the parts are, are set with no deflection, no movement. And so the mobile robot can engage the conveyor and this rack is, is fixed and bound by the conveyor frame while the robot can, it can uh, course correct underneath. I should make a note too, feel free, there's a Q and A. Don't hesitate to shoot me a question during the presentation. I'm actually flying through it much quicker than I had expected. And I was kind of worried that I was going to take most of your uh, most of your Q and A time. So we're in, we're doing quite well with pace here, and I do expect good Q and A time at the end. So something more advanced. Um, what we what I'm showing here is a, a combination of a unit carrier AMR with a pallet stacker. What you see or what we've seen is applications that would be ideal for a forked unit like the Max N10 pallet stacker from AutoGuide and a mobile platform 
like the Mir 500 to work together. One picks off racking and, and delivers it to the mobile platform and then the mobile platform delivers to shipping. And what that does is it leverages cost efficiencies between the two different styles of units to maximize the total solution. More advanced applications here. We've got um, delivering in-feed product to a six-axis robot cell to increase input channels that were limited by fixed conveyance. And so what I'm trying to show here is you've got a traditional fixed ro six-axis robot palletizing cell, and I've seen it multiple times where you've we've got limited in-feed uh, based on the, the location of the of the cell, limited to the input of one production line. And what we can do is we can accept material with a mobile platform from the output of a production line, deliver it to a more centralized palletizing cell, and then we can have a, another AGV or AMR, like the pallet stacker, take that load from the outfeed of the cell and deliver it to the warehouse. And what this does is it allows you to take multiple production lines and feed a single robot cell at a higher utilization as opposed to multiple robot cells you know, typically could be one per production line uh, where you find you'll get a low utilization of the robot. So again going back to uh, what I said earlier about the adoption of the AMR technology uh, it should be considered thoughtfully this goes with the adoption of all automation and more broadly technology in general and the idea is that there's, there's more opportunities these days than ever for a square peg, round hole situation. And, you know, that's ultimately what we want to avoid is, is delivering the wrong solution and having assets sit idle. This, you know, what, what we're hoping to do with our, with our AMR and AGV partners is to work with the customer, the end user, and find out what is the, what is the best application, what is, or uh, the, the best technology for the application and how do we ensure that ROI is delivered so that CFOs can gladly provide you know, more capex next time based on a reputation of delivering solid projects. I am well ahead of schedule and leading up to the conclusion here for us we're looking at the, as we move forward we're looking at building new fixtures new appliances so that we can have new use cases and again aiding our solution delivery to the end users and that is it for me i've managed to do this in just under 20 minutes which gives us plenty of time for for q a um I do see a question that just came in that says my audio dropped off. I don't know that it did. Um, so we've got a, a question here. If we have an existing fleet of AGVs conducting simple deliveries, are you able to reconfigure or redeploy these towards higher level, quote, smarter solutions, or are they considered sunk costs? It's a good question. I, I can't give you a, a definitive answer without having a, a look at the application, but I don't see any reason why an existing fleet of AGVs can't be leveraged whether it's third-party technology, we've got tools that we can we can use to um, to increase the the increase the resolution at which we can locate a forked vehicle, whether it's a manual forked vehicle or an AGV. I would the short answer on that one is I don't think it would be sunk costs, um, but it would definitely take a more. I don't like I don't like promising something without fully understanding. So feel free to reach out to me. I will uh, go back up to the original slide where I had my email address and 
You're welcome to give me a show. Got a question from Josh, which uh, if it's Josh Clore, I'd like to give you a shout out, Josh, for having a, Josh had a baby last week. Uh, there's a virtual round of applause, Josh, you should enjoy that, uh, as well as you'll enjoy a full night's sleep 30 years from now. So how does JMP connect to ERP WMS? Um, most ERP WMS systems will leverage REST API and JMP, we've got We've got uh, tools that we use, mostly ignition based, that um, allow us to utilize REST to connect with higher level systems, uh, just no different than uh, Mir Fleet or Auto Fleet Manager. Um, and then we can get that data into a traditional control format. Then we can use uh, native drivers like Rockwell or, um, or Toyo Puck for Toyota. So the short answer on that is REST is a, is a, is a big tool for us. What, I uh, got some more, sorry, I'm not as quick coming up with these Q and A's. Josh is quite active. Um, if it's the same Josh, maybe you uh, are getting more sleep than I expect. What kind of analytics can you provide out from your systems? Um, for anybody who managed to join on to last week's call, we had our information systems group on. And our information systems group provided an overview of OEE. For me, the AMR is an asset. I was a, my background is asset management. Um, I managed the maintenance department, and and the most important oh the most important um, analytic data point for me is OEE. But there's no reason anything that's available within the AMR. So you know battery level, um, mission, but sta uh, location. We can provide anything that's existing or that's available, made available by the OEM through their fleet software and pull that into our, to our translation, our supervisory control module. And then we can provide it, whether it's in a, a user interface that we provide or whether it's an existing user interface that the customer has, like, a, like an HMI or, or a, or a um, SCADA system. Got an anonymous question here. Um, do you offer paid studies to identify where AGVs would be of value in my factory targeting a certain ROI hurdle? Absolutely, we do. JMP has a product line that we refer to as the automation roadmap. And so for the AGV AMR division, our automation roadmaps are focused almost entirely on AGV or mobile transport. Obviously, given the fact that we're all automation professionals, we do. We do have an eye for automation outside of those boundaries, but um, if absolutely, if uh, you're interested, re feel free to reach out. I think my uh, my intro slide is still showing, and you can shoot me an email anytime. I have a question here from Sean Merrick. Sean, I don't know that we've met. I have a customer that uses five fork trucks due to the height of stacking pallets. They are frankly dangerous. Can you offer a solution for that? Um, absolutely. I'm a possibilionist. I believe there's a possibility to solve just about any problem. And the idea of stacking, uh, height of stacking pallets, it, it, you know, whether you get into stacking loads on loads or, or stacking loads on racks, uh, we can get into all sorts of different um, high stack issues. We're actually evaluating an application right now that is four pallet locations high, but it's on pallet racking. Um, again, more than happy to review the application with you. I can't stress enough that the JMP AGV AMR division, we focus very thoroughly in the early stages to identify or to listen to the customer and I help them identify the right technology for the solution. Sean, by all means, shoot me an email. I'd be happy to, happy to talk with you. I've uh, got another anonymous. Will your AGV solution seamlessly tie into our current control architecture or are you tied to a specific interface that we would have to adapt to to get full functionality? That's a great question. Um, so we leverage the power of ignition by inductive automation. And the idea there is that we are, we are using uh, Java and Python to, 
to write code that will leverage REST to talk to the different fleet software or other level three and four software packages and translate that to level two and one type software, um, hardware and software like PLC, SCADA, historians. Um, the, the cost of inductive automation's ignition product line is fairly inexpensive. So if a customer has an existing control architecture our, and their preference is to leverage that architecture, we would be happy to, to integrate, which is exactly what we do. We'd be happy to integrate our solution with uh, their existing one. Obviously, if it's a if it's a mainstream platform, like um, you know whether it's from Schneider or Rockwell, there's a very serious possibility that we could um, build it right into their system. Um, for now, though, you know the cost of Ignition's backend is you know it's less uh, less than twenty five hundred dollars, I think. So it's fairly inexpensive. Got a question here from Don Shanklin. Based on your background running maintenance for a manufacturer, does leasing AMRs potentially offer any advantages versus purchasing? Don, that's a great question. Uh, it's something that we've looked at. Uh, we've got a finance financing partner or leasing partner. Um, we have looked at it. I've. We don't necessarily see a significant advantage. Um, primarily with the leasing option, you still need, well, you can look at it from an approval standpoint. Most companies treat leases as capital expenditures, so you still require capital approval. Um, in the end though, you know, it, I, I'm an advocate for leasing a project because it's a cash flow thing. Why, why pay for the, why pay for the project now when you can, spread your payments out and some of the some of the terms that companies offer uh, we've looked at wells fargo we've looked at some other l lenders and they will they love leasing applications uh, agv and amr applications they'll lease the entire project for you so it's there are benefits again it would be situational though and it would be something that we'd have to have to talk about thanks for the questions sean josh don Anonymous. I don't see any more questions. Anyone before we hit the top of the hour? It's currently one fifty eight. For anybody who's uh, still out there, appreciate you joining. I uh, guess I will begin the sign off process here. So I'd like to thank everybody for coming on. I uh, appreciate time is uh, time is a is a unique thing right now with without being able to go out and visit and shake hands. Where I find that it's uh, a lot more conversations and that my days are definitely busier than than ever. So um, absolutely, please feel free to reach out if you. Uh, if you think you have an application, don't hesitate. We don't we don't require that you have everything solved. That's we consider that to be our job. So, um, again, thanks a lot. Oh, we got a one last. <laughs> thanks, Carl. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna sign off now. Um, thanks, everyone. Take care. Be safe.